So today we are going to continue on our journey through the four Ds, focusing on develop. Um, and we're going to be doing a, a part two to our HTML lecture that we started last week. So last week, we talked about text in HTML, um, talked about paragraphs and headers, bold, italic, stuff like that. We also talked about links, so how to link to um, other sites, how to link to different areas on your web page, how to link to other pages on your website. So today we are going to focus on lists, images, tables, forms, audio, and video using HTML tags. So the first thing we're going to talk about is lists. Uh, so there's three different types of lists when it comes to HTML. There's ordered lists, which are numbered, one through whatever. There's unordered lists, which are just bullet points. And then there's definitions. Definitions basically have a word or something, and then indented below that is a description a de or a definition of that uh, for that word. Again, this was all initially built for scientists and researchers to share scientific and re uh, research-based information. So um, the definition and list aspect of it comes from that. So this is for uh, ordered lists. So when you have uh, one through whatever number you want to have for your uh, list points, uh, it's OL to represent an ordered list. That makes sense, right? OL for ordered lists. And then in between the open and closed tags for ordered lists, we have LI, which is a list list point. Um, so LI stands for list point. And then you just have the open and closed tags for each one of those, and then the text in between. And then when you load it in the browser, this is what it looks like. It's a, a list of, this, in this case, um, instructions to make a meal, um, one through five. So that's ordered list. Unordered lists, again, are just bullet points. Um, for that, for HTML, the tag is UL for unordered lists. Again, makes sense, right? And then again, you just have the LI, the list points um, in between the UL tag, open and close tag. <laughs> the in between the ul open and close tags uh, and then when you load it in the browser it'll look like that for definitions so it's dl for definition lists again makes sense and then inside that instead of list points we have dt which stands for definition title and dd which stands for definition uh, description or definition so the title is uh, sashimi, and then the description or definition is sliced raw fish served with condiments. So this is the HTML code, and this is what it looks like in the browser. Now with uh, lists, you can also do nested lists inside of each other. So if we wanted to have like um, a unordered list that had um, a parent list and then uh, children lists underneath each parent, you could do that by nesting them. So we have UL for unordered list for our, our main list, our list points underneath that, and then underneath one, uh, underneath, underneath pastries, we have another UL grouping for unordered lists and more bullet points, more list points uh, in that. So when we do that and then load in the browser, it's gonna basically indent underneath pastries and add a, a different type of bullet for the, the nested list underneath pastries. All right, um, so why don't we just go back and kind of play around with this with Glitch, um, and then we'll come back to the slides. So let's go to glitch.com. So everyone should be logged in and uh, see something like this. Um, so again, like always, just go to new project, create a new project, and we can go to Glitch Hello website. This is the basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript website that we can create. And let's just go to HTML. And let's just delete all this stuff. And let's go to CSS. I'm going to delete that too. Just going to kind of go from the very basics. Let's delete the script.js. Delete the to do.md, delete the readme, 
delete the git ignore. And let's just leave the license on there, it's fine. So in index.html, again, this is our, our main, it's kind of like the home page, but we could add multiple pages associated to this in our root file system. So let's just do HTML. Let's give it um, a head and a body. So again, this is kind of the basic setup for any HTML website. We have to define it as an HTML page by um, using the HTML tag and also uh, saving it as .html file. Uh, then inside the HTML open and close tag, we have our head tag and our body tags. And the head, again, is anything that um, we need for the website but doesn't get loaded visually into the browser window. And then body uh, is everything that we want loaded visually into the browser window. Um, so in the head, we could do something like add the title, say uh, week eight HTML part two. And then in body, we can add any of our other um, content that's going to be loaded in, in the browser window. So why don't we add a couple list points? Uh, let's do an unordered list first. And make a list point, li. Let's do apples, li, bananas, li. Strawberries. Okay, so then you can see on the right hand side that it's auto um, uh, loading the page for us to see visually. And underneath that, we could do let's do an ordered list. So OL, then list points, uh, movies, TV shows. music. And then over here on the right, you can see that it's um, an ordered list with uh, numbers in there. Uh, so now why don't we do a nested list underneath that? So let's say we want to have a, a list of movies underneath movies, a list of TV shows underneath TV shows. We could do that too by doing, uh, so we could do unordered lists or, or ordered lists or definition lists. It doesn't really matter. We can mix and match them. Let's do a, a UL for unordered list. And let's make a LI. And I'll say Dune. Let's do a list of movies. Um, free guy. Adam's family. So you can see on the right hand side that we have our ordered list. Then underneath movies, we have an unordered list um, nested underneath movies. Um, and that's giving us bullet points instead of numbers. So let's go back to the slides and move on from lists. So the next thing we're going to talk about is images. Because we're using Glitch, it's going to be a little different than uh, if we were doing this locally on our machines. But if we were doing this locally on our machines, then we would want to be as, again, as organized as possible with our root directory file system um, and have a images um, folder where we put all of our images into. So then we know where our images live and we can reference them in our HTML. But because we're using Glitch, it's a little different. We're just going to upload our images to the asset uh, image browser window. Uh, no, sorry, asset. So in Glitch, they have an asset folder that we load, upload all of our assets into. So that's what we're going to use for images and fonts and anything that we upload to Glitch for our projects are going to be uploaded to the assets folder. So it's a little different in Glitch, but it's OK. With images, um, the tag for images is just IMG, which is an abbreviation for image, right? So this is what the HTML looks like. And we have a source. So this is where the image actually lives. So it's going to, uh, 
So in the um, locally, you would probably have an images folder and then inside that images folder is the name of the image file. Uh, we have an alt alternate um, text option. So for some reason, the, the, the source link for that image is broken and it can't find that image when it loads the page, then it's gonna display this alternate text description of, of the image instead. And then we have a title attribute too, which uh, can give us some more information about what that image is for anyone who is uh, visually impaired um, and can't visually see the image. Uh, it'll read this title to them to uh, give them a description of what the image uh, is of. This is um, the HTML, and this is what it would look like loading it, loaded into the browser. If you wanted to put a link on an image, you can just wrap the link around the image. So that's uh, probably going to be useful for anyone who's doing a portfolio site and wants to have a thumbnail image of their, their work. And then click on that thumbnail, and it opens up a, another page with a more detailed description of, of the project. So all you have to do is wrap the A tag, which is the link tag, stands for anchor, um, the open and close tag around the image. So the image would be inside of the open and close A tag. And then when you click on the image, it'll go to that link. Um, so there's some other attributes that you can include with the image uh, tag, the image HTML tag, like width and height. So you can change the width and height of the image using HTML. So in this case, if it was originally larger, if we didn't have the width and height attributes um, in this HTML code, then it would just load the full size of, of whatever that image is, whatever the original dimensions are. It would just load in that, that full image. But we could scale it down. I wouldn't recommend it scaling it up, but you could scale it down to whatever size makes sense for your project um, and your HTML code. So here's a little bit smaller version of the image uh, that we show, showed before. When it comes to where to place your images, especially when it comes to like working with text on a website, um, you could play around with how the text wraps around the image. So if we had the image above like a paragraph here, then it would just kind of sit on top of the paragraph. But you can also put the image inside the paragraph tag. So it's like in line with the other text. And then it would sit on the first line and kind of push the text on the first line uh, to the right a little bit. But there's also another attribute for image called align. And you can align the image to the left, to the right, and maybe to the center, I think. But if you do it to the left, then it's going to be aligned to the left, and then all the text is going to wrap around the image, starting from the top of the image and then go down. If you're going to align it to the right, then it's going to just do the same thing, but just on the right-hand side. OK, I don't think there is a center option. I think it's just left and right. So this is kind of like the old way of doing things. Um, it's, it still works with HTML, but once we get to CSS, Floating things and alignment and positioning of different objects and um, HTML tags and images are going to be, you're going to mainly do that in CSS and, and less so in HTML. But still good to know that you can do it with HTML. So when it comes to image formats to use uh, for your websites, um, I think I talked about this a little bit last week, but Images that have minimal colors, just like a couple of colors, a handful of colors that you can kind of pick out, or just like one or two, like black and white. Um, then a, anime, a GIF is probably fine, uh, or GIF, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, for anything that's full color, like pictures, then I would su suggest doing those as JPEGs. Uh, anything that you want to have a transparent background, like a logo, then I would save that out as a PNG. You can also use an SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, which you can export from Illustrator. So those are two options if you want to have a transparent background, but still maintain the crispness around the outline. You can do a transparent background with a, a GIF, but it's going to get pixelated and, and kind of crappy around that, the outline of the, of the image itself. 
Um, and then on top of that, you can do animated GIFs. You can load animated GIFs and onto your website, like a, a loading animation or you know something like that. Um, my friend uh, started a design studio called Read and Raider, and they got really well known for doing uh, really creative anime gifts for the fashion industry. Since then, they've moved on to more like uh, aug augmented and virtual reality and like 3D uh, renderings. Um, but so they first kind of became big with uh, animated gifts for, for um, their fashion clients. So you can check out their stuff too um, for inspiration, readandraider.com. So image dimensions, you really have to think about how you are sizing the image once you bring it into the HTML. So you really don't want to modify the proportions by squeezing or stretching the image because it's just going to look bad. It's going to look uh, just terrible when it's loaded on the page. You don't want to export an image that's too small because when you uh, enlarge it on your website, it's going to get really pixelated and blurry. So you want to at least export the image from Photoshop um, at the size you're going to use it. Um, and ideally, probably 150 DPI to account for the retina displays and like high resolution displays that we have now. So make sure that you're outputting an image at the size that's going to load on the website. Definitely don't go smaller. Uh, and if you go any uh, larger, that's that's okay, but I won't go too large because then you have to worry about load times. Like, is this going to take forever to to load onto my web page um, for the common person? Uh, so better to know the dimensions that you're going to use uh, on the website and then export the image to those dimensions at 150 DPI. All right, so let's go back to Glitch. And let's go ahead and find an image. So let's say uh, beautiful, sunny day. So I'm just going to find an image on Google. Uh, and then let's go, if you do a right click or control click, you can save, uh, save image as. And then I'm just going to save that image to my desktop. So just go find an image somewhere and we'll play around with that. And then let's upload that image to our assets folder on Glitch. So that's a JPEG, which makes sense because it's a picture. I'm going to upload that to my assets folder. And then when you click on the image, uh, we basically want to copy this URL. So there's a nice copy button. It's kind of nice. It gives us a dimension. So it's 1920 by 1200 pixels. Gives us the file size too, which is kind of cool. Uh, so copy that URL. And let's go back to our index.html file. And then below this, let's add an image. Source equals, and then paste command V that URL in there. Then we have a, a beautiful sunny day image on our website. So that's all you need to do to get an image on there. But there's other things that we should probably include, like an alt. Let's do an alt equals beautiful beautiful sunny day. And then let's also give it a uh, title. This is a photo of a field on a sunny day. And then let's also give it a width. Let's say, let's make it kind of small, 200. There you go. So uh, you might have noticed that I just put width, I didn't put height in, uh, but it scaled it down proportionally. Um, so if you're going to change the width and height of an image, then I would just put one value for width or height, and then it'll automatically change the width, uh, the opposite value to um, scale it down proportionally. If I were to put width and height, 
and let's say it's 100, then it's going to squash it. Let's do 50, so it's more dramatic. So we don't want to do that, right? For the most part, there might be instances where we might want to do it for like creative purposes, but generally speaking, you don't want to squash or stretch your image. So let's go back and just delete one of these. It doesn't matter which one. And then it'll automatically fix the proportions uh, of the image for you. So the, the link that we copied is going to be in, in the source here. And the source is just where the, the image lives, essentially. So usually it'd be something like images forward slash sunny day dot JPEG. But because we're using Glitch, we, we're just going to use the assets folder. And when you upload it there, it's, it's being stored on another server somewhere else. Um, and we're just going to copy the full link to where it's, it lives on that server, that CDN server. Um, but this is actually a good example to show like a broken link. So because we don't have an images folder and we don't have a, a file named sunny underscore day dot JPEG, it broke the image link on the right hand side and it's displaying the alternate text here instead. So uh, instead uh, of showing an image, it's saying beautiful sunny day. So let's, uh, let's play around with like a set of paragraph after this image and play around with that a little bit. So I could say, okay, or um, if some yada, 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 just kind of goobly geek, gibberish, doesn't really matter. Uh, okay. I'm just going to copy that and add some more. So it's a little bigger. Okay. So we have our image above our text here, above our paragraph, and it's just sitting on top. So let's kind of play around with um, placement. So I'm going to cut this. Or let's copy it. Let's do a copy, command C. And I'm going to paste it here. And let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's do like 100. So now we could see that this, this image, the second smaller image, is on the same line, the baseline of the first um, line of text. So if we wanted to have this wrap around the image, you could say, what was it, align equals left. Uh, I spelled it wrong, sorry, align equals left. There you go. And then it wraps around the image like that. And then you, if you want to do right, you can do right too. And then again, just wraps around the image. So I'm going to add some comments here too. So say comment for images. And let's add a comment above here. And again, uh, if you do command forward slash, it automatically comments out uh, that section that you're on. Uh, and then let's call this lists. So this is just kind of helpful. I don't know why um, I put a title in the image, but it doesn't show it up. So the title doesn't uh, appear um, visually. It's mainly there for, um, for a couple of reasons for like uh, search engines like Google to search through your code and have a description of what the image is. Um, rather than like using AI to figure out what what image it is, so it's for for searchability purposes, and then also for um, uh, the uh, visually impaired. So anyone who can't see, uh, it'll um, there's a program that basically reads through all the the content on a website for them. Uh, and audibly, and then um, the title is read to them so they know what image is being displayed. So it's more for those two purposes. It's uh, not for any sort of visual titling at the top of the image. For that, you would have to add like a, a header or something like that. So let's add like a H1. Beautiful, beautiful, sunny. Day. 
Okay, so I'm just going to briefly talk about audio and video um, when it comes to HTML uh, elements because it's probably better to do at least video anyway to, to use a different platform um, rather than hosting the video yourself um, on your servers and uh, playing it in the browser using HTML code, but I'll briefly talk about it. With HTML, there's an, a standard default audio player and video player. Uh, it's going to look probably look different on every browser, but um, this is what it looks like when you're in Chrome. And this is the code that you would use to get it into Chrome or to get it onto your website. So it's an audio HTML tag and it has a couple options in there that you can play around with. Um, so controls was basically displaying the control to play the audio. And there's autoplay and muted. So autoplay is when the website is loaded, and then it's going to autoplay that audio for you. You don't have to press play. It's going to automatically do that. And muted is uh, the same thing. On load, it's going to be muted. Um, so the user would have to go in and unmute it to, to hear it. And then audio has an open and a closed tag. And then the contents inside is the source content. So where does that audio live? So we have a source for um, uh, two different files. Uh, so there's a couple of different options when it comes to file formats you could use. Uh, OGG is one, and then MP3 is another. I think MP3 is probably much more common and, and probably loads on uh, every browser, every modern browser anyway. So I would just use MP3. Uh, I don't think that OGG is really that important. Um, and then if there's any issues loading this audio, then it'll display your browser does not support the audio element. But I think all browsers, at least modern ones today, support the audio element. So that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, so all you need is the audio file, an MP3 file, uh, upload it to your assets folder, put the link just like an image in the source uh, area. Uh, define it and the type as the audio MPEG, because MP3 is uh, MPEG. Um, and then it, it'll display the audio player if you want to have it. And then, yeah, you can listen to, to audio on your website. So the video is basically the same. We have uh, a HTML video player, which you can uh, control like auto autoplay and mute as well. But this is what it's going to look like pretty much on most uh, browsers. And the code is basically the same, um, except we have its video instead of audio for the tag. And the width and height you can define uh, for the size of the, the player. And then, yeah, mp4s, I think .movs probably load fine. .oggs, again, I never use that, that file format, but you can load that as well. But yeah, again, same thing, very similar to the audio. Uh, code. Um, that said, again, I would suggest using something like YouTube or Vimeo um, and uh, embedding it on your site uh, site as an iframe. It's just uh, audio or video files are, are usually very large. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to like upload it to your assets folder uh, or um, store it on your own servers because you can use YouTube or Vimeo to store your videos on their servers and then just link to it directly from, from uh, their platform. I would use this instead of the HTML, at least video tags. So the next thing we're going to talk about are tables. This kind of is a throwback to the origins of HTML and why it was created for scientists and researchers. And a lot of that, um, information is data-based and data requires tables. So that's why HTML has a, a table element to display information and, and data in table tabular format. So it's just like stock information or you know uh, information around certain findings that have to be in table format allow you to display that information real easily using the HTML table tag. So this is uh, the table tag, very easy to remember. The, the main parent tag is just table. That's how you define that you're gonna be creating a table. 
Then inside those that open and close tag, we have uh, TR, which is um, table row. And then inside those open and close tag, we have TD, which is table data. So this is a table. We have two rows. And then uh, in those rows, we have three columns of data. So when we load down the browser, it's going to look like that. We have two rows, three columns of data, and a table. So you can also have uh, table headers. So table headers are, are basically just going to be bold. But here's an example for that. So we have our table. Inside that, we have two rows, table row. Inside of that, we have uh, three columns of table header for the first. And then in the second row, we have a table header for the first column, and then just table data. You can add a scope as well. I, I really don't use that very much, but scope is for either the column. So this is a header for a column, and this is a header for a row. So this is what that would look like. You can also do a column spanning and row spans. So if we wanted like this to span two columns, to like cover two columns rather than just one, then we basically have a header here for the row. Um, then data that's gonna for geography is gonna cover two columns. Then one column for math, one column for art for that row. So it's gonna look something like this. So geography is covering two columns because it's for this in this case it's based off of time and geography. And so this is a good example for like your class schedule or something goes between nine and 11. So you want to span two columns. Yeah, and then this is kind of visually shows you the, that there's an empty column here too. So that's just an empty T, T, D or T, T, H, table header or table data. And then you can do the same thing with rows, row span. So same idea, it's just spanning two rows. But um, yeah, that's kind of the gist of, of tables in HTML. So why don't we go back to glitch and we'll play around with tables a little bit. So let's, I'm just gonna add comment here, so tables, HTML tables. So again, we have to define it as a table. And then here we can do, let's do some uh, table rows. And then let's do table header. And I don't know, uh, tools. Um, food. And then group. So scroll down. We have our headers down here tools, food, and fruit. Uh, let's do another TR table row. Let's do some table data. Um, say uh, 39 table data, 89 ED as 132. So again, at the bottom. We have our headers and our data row. So we have two rows, right? The two rows and then three columns in each row goes there. Uh, so if we wanted to say like, let's do another row for like a count and all this count, we can say, Uh, what's called scope? If we wanted to row. It's kind of unnecessary, but I don't know. You can include that if you wanted to. So then we have an empty cell here, and then tools, food, fruit, and then the next row we have a cell. Uh, that's a header, TH, that's count. 
So this is the count for all the fruit, tools, food, and fruits. So we could just add test here. And then you can see that test goes back there. And then if we remove it, then it's gone. So the next thing I want to talk about are forms. Um, so forms, pretty self-explanatory. It's a way for you, the user to fill out some information on your website, on a web page, and then send it and submit it so it could get sent back to you or back to a service or a database or something like that. So we use forms pretty much every day when we fill out, create an account online or buy something online. So it's, it's pretty standard to use HTML forms on a regular basis. So there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different options when it comes to putting together a form. So there's adding text, there's making choices and then submissions. And then you can also upload information, upload files to submit as well. So for adding text, there's input text, which is just a single line, password input, which is kind of hidden, and then text area, which is for multi-line uh, or paragraphs of information. Making choices, we have radio buttons. So a radio button just allows you to just choose one option. There's check boxes, which allows you to check off as many as you want. And then there's drop down boxes, which again is similar to radio buttons, where you can only uh, select one option in the drop down. There's submitting forms. So there's uh, submitting buttons. That's just an HTML button. And then you could also do image buttons. So if you wanted to customize the look and feel, um, you can add an image button. Again, for anything style related, uh, that'll be related to CSS, which we'll talk about next week. So you can actually style the HTML submit button rather than using an image, which is always better. If you can use CSS um, versus using an image, you always should choose to use CSS. Uh, and then the last thing is uh, file upload uh, HTML element for forms as well. So forms are pretty uh, basic, uh, it can be. We have a form tag with a, for HTML. And inside that form tag, we have an action. So whenever you submit the information, uh, hit submit on the form, it'll send the information to uh, this PHP file, essentially, which will then in turn like send it to a database or send uh, some, an email to something uh, or someone. So here we just have a form with an action that's going to a PHP page, uh, which we're not going to talk about in this class. And then we have a input type text for the username. You can pass in different parameters like size, so how many uh, characters you can include in it, and, or sorry, how, how wide the actual text area is. And then max length is how many characters you can type into it. And then we're putting this inside of a paragraph and adding um, a little title to it. So it's just text that says username, which is the title for this input field. So this is what it looks like when it's loaded in the browser. And then for username and password, um, we can create a, they're both input types, but you can change the type to either text or a password. Uh, you can give each one a unique name. So this one's called username, this one's called password. And again, you can have size and, and max length for both of them. So this is what it looks like with the HTML. And then this is what it looks like loaded in the browser. Here's an example if you want to have um, a larger text area. So we use the text area HTML tag. Again, you want to use a, a unique name because the names are used when you send this off to like the database. That's going to be stored as a comments column, essentially, in the data. Uh, for text area, you can also include columns and rows. That's, again, how big the, that text box is going to be. And then you can include some. Um, some text that's going to load in when the web page loads. So enter your comments here or whatever, something like that can be um, there on load, essentially. And then we just have some text, a paragraph on top for a little description um, or title to that text area. So this is what it looks like with HTML and then load it in the browser. It's going to look something like that. So we have radio buttons too. So radio buttons, again, allow you to just allow the user to just select one option. So these, again, are inputs. 
and you just change the type to instead of text or password, it's going to be radio. The name is for the group of radio buttons. So in this case, it's going to be genre. And then you add a value for each individual radio button. So it's rock, pop, and jazz. And then you could also add a checked um, value uh, for the one that you want checked on load, if any. Uh, so rock is going to be checked when you load the web page. And then again, just some a paragraph on the top, some text on the top to give some uh, intro text to what this is. So again, this is what it looks like in HTML. And here it is in the browser. Checkboxes are like radio buttons, but they allow you to select multiple options, not just one. So again, this is an input. And you just change the type. And so radio, it's going to be checkbox. Uh, the name is, again, for the group of, of all these checks checkboxes. So in this case, it's service. And then you add a value for each individual one. So iTunes, Last.fm, Spotify. Then you can also add checked um, or to each one of these. So you can have them all checked. You can have some checked. But you can have none checked um, on load. Uh, so that's up to you. So this is the HTML. And then this is what it looks like in the browser. So the dropdown is a little bit different. So it's not an input type. Um, it is a select HTML element. So uh, the select tag is what you use for dropdowns. You give it a name, again, for database purposes or uh, sending purposes, identification, essentially. And then inside the select open and close tag, we have options. So these are the different options uh, that are going to show up in the dropdown. And then you give each one a, a value. So we have iPod, radio, and PC. And then you can have one be selected on load two. So instead of checked, it's selected. So this is what it looks like in the browser loaded. So I guess there is an option for a multiple select box, which is kind of like a drop down where you can select multiple options in it. So it's the select tag again, give it a name. Uh, give it a size for how many um, options there are in it, I believe, or no, how, sorry, how, how much is visible on load. So how many rows are visible on load. Uh, and then each option has a different value. So for this, it's guitar, drums, keys, and bass. And then you can have selected um, options for any or all of them. Uh, so again, you, you don't have to select one. You can select multiple. And if it says selected here, then that's going to be automatically selected when you load the website, load the web page. And this is what it looks like in the browser. So if you had more options here, then there would be a little scroll bar here. If you had like five, six, or seven options, and you would scroll down or up to, to see them all. So the size four here is just displaying four options on load. But if there's more, that's fine. You just kind of scroll through them. And then. We have a submit button. So once uh, you want to submit the form, then you want to have a submit button. And that is an input as well. And the type is just submit. And then you can apply a value is the text that gets displayed in the button itself. So this is just called subscribe. So this is a email subscription form, essentially. And this is what it looks like in the browser. So it says subscribe on the submit button. If you want to do an image button, you can do that too. And sort of the submit type is going to be an image type. And then you just give it an image source, just like with the image, like any other image. So where that image lives for the button. And then you can give it a width and a height. And then this is what it looks like. But again, I would recommend using CSS for any styles to the, to the button rather than doing an image. Because if the image is broken, then it doesn't look good. But it also is harder to click on. Its images take longer to load. CSS code is, is much faster to load. So there's a lot of benefits. So why don't we do a, a, just a very basic form? The submit aspect is, is going to require some PHP code. So we're not going to do that. But we could at least get the HTML in there. So we can visually see what it looks like when we put the HTML code in there and then what it looks like loaded in the browser. Okay, so let's go back to Glitch. Then under our table, just gonna add another comment. Forms. So we're gonna use the form HTML tag. 
then inside there, let's just add a paragraph for say, I don't know, username. And then we can add an input type would be text. And let's give this a name of user. So at the bottom, you can see that we have username here. So we have our form. Let's give this a title too. I think we could do it inside a form. Let's do H1 form example. Let's see if that works. OK, cool. So we have a title. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do P. And let's try a password. Do an input. Type is going to be password, I think. And name, password. Okay. So that should, so when you type in there, it's going to give you a hidden password versus the username is going to be visible. Let's try uh, radio buttons. Um, I'm just going to do a line break here. Input type equals radio. Name. Let's do the same thing, genre. And the first one, let's do value rock. And let's make that one checked. I think you could just type checked. I don't think you have to say checked equals checked. And another input type radio name equals, so it should be the same genre. If it's related, value pop. Another input type equals radio. Oops. Name equals genre, and value equals jazz. OK, scroll down, let's see if that works. Yep, so we've got our radio buttons, but there's no text. So let's add some text so we can visually see what, which one is which. Pop, jazz. There we go. So on load, let's re refresh this. Uh, yeah, so just saying checked works. Rock is checked. And then you can click through each one of these and select something else. So if you wanted to make this check boxes instead, we can just say, OK, checked. Or was it check box, sorry. Check box instead of radio box. Box. And then it'll be checkboxes. So you can select multiple. Now let's do one more for submit. And then value equals say submit. And then there's a submit button there. But if you click on it, it's just going to reload the page because we don't have a PHP file or anything that any sort of action that's pointing to. Let's move on from forms then. OK, so I've been kind of using this throughout today, but um, you can add comments in HTML. And comments are basically just anything uh, that you want ignored from, from the web browser when it, it's loaded in. So for HTML, the, the comments, um, to comment something out, uh, it's a caret with an exclamation mark and two dashes, then whatever content inside, and then two dashes, and then caret. Um, so we have start of introduction here. We have end of introduction here. And then we have um, a link here that we are commenting out. So the H1 and H2 should show up when we load in the browser. And then any of the commented out sections are just going to be ignored, so they're not going to be displayed in the browser. 
So this is the, the code, and then the, the browser should look something like this. So the comments are basically if you want to display something or, te or temporarily not display something on load, you just want to comment it out, but you don't want to delete it completely, you can use the comments to do that. If you want to add, like how I've been doing it, it's using comments to comment the actual code itself. Uh, so we know like this section is for forms, this section is for images, this section is for something else. So that's what comments are used for. Um, the next, next thing I want to talk about is IDs. Um, so IDs are attributes that you could apply to any HTML element. So an ID uh, is great for, so we talked about links last week and how you can link to a specific ID on your, on your page. So IDs are supposed to be unique. You're, you're not supposed to use them multiple times on your, on your website or on your web page. You can use it on other pages, multiple pages. But on your on each individual page, you should only use an ID once. So here we're using an ID for pull quote. Another good thing for IDs is that you can assign styles and CSS to IDs. So yeah, those those are great as well. So those are the two main uses for IDs: is linking to a spe specific area on your page using like navigation or something, and then also applying styles using CSS to a specific ID. So here we have a pull quote, quote ID for one paragraph, and then we could apply a style to it that would be different than the other paragraphs. So if we wanted this to be italic, then we could apply an italic style to it, bold, apply a bold style to it, et cetera, et cetera. But we'll talk about IDs more when we talk about CSS as well. Uh, the other thing that you can apply uh, is a, a class. Um, or multiple classes to any uh, HTML tag. And classes are similar to IDs, but you can use them multiple times on your, on your page. So we're using important, the important class twice on, for each one of these paragraphs. And these are mainly used for um, uh, CSS styling. So if we want everything that had a class of important to be all caps, then in our CSS, we would say, OK, important, anything that is labeled important as a class, it's going to be all caps. Um, we have another one here. You can have multiple classes assigned to different tags. So you have important and attendance. And in this case, we want to say, OK, anything that's labeled attendance is going to be in red. And again, this is in our CSS. So we'll talk about more. We'll talk about that more next week. So this is what it looks like in the HTML. and then. Also, we would have to apply some CSS to this. Uh, and then this is what it would look like in the browser. So all of these are paragraphs tags, but this one has a, um, a important class associated to it. This one has an important class and an attendance class associated to it. So that's why they're all, they all look different. They have different classes uh, from each other. So there's two types of elements uh, in HTML. There's block elements, which are basically just stacked on top of each other when they're loaded in the browser. And then there's inline elements, um, which are just in line with each other. So block elements would be like headers and paragraphs and uh, lists and list points. Um, those are all stacked on top of each other by default. So those are, that's why it's called blocks and block elements. They're, you're stacking blocks on top of each other and kind of building it up from the top down, essentially. So this is what it looks like in the browser. Each one is stacked on top of each other. They're not like the dates of origin isn't uh, starting at the end of the name here. It's uh, underneath it. So each one of these elements is a block on top of each other. Versus inline elements uh, are in line with each other. So in line, in line elements would be like I for italic, B for bold. Um, those are in line because they're not stacked on top of each other. They're in line with the rest of the content. So those are the two types of elements that uh, we have to work with when, with HTML. Block elements, which are just stacked on top of each other, and then inline elements, which is just in line with the rest of the content. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is grouping elements together. Uh, so it's especially when I talk, start talking about 
CSS and layout and where things are positioned and how things are organized on, on your web page. It's good to think of everything as <coughs> it's good to think of everything as being kind of in groups uh, of like sections. So there's like a header at the top, there's like um, a sidebar, there's body content, there's footer. Um, those are different groups. So you want to keep uh, those that, that content for each group together contained in your HTML. To do that, um, we can use something called a div element, div, uh, which kind of I think it stands for division, so dividing different sections, and then put all of our content for each section inside of those div elements. So you kind of think of, of everything as like a uh, separate boxes. We have a box for a header, a box for our uh, sidebar, a box for our body content, and a box for our footer. And then we put all of our contents in those, into those boxes that should be in those different sections and, and those different groups. So here we have our, our header group. We give it an ID header, which makes sense. Then inside there, we have our logo image and then our navigation as an um, a unordered list. Uh, so we have open close div ID to contain all of our header content in here. Then we would do the same thing for uh, our sidebar and our body content and our, 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 our main content and then our footer content. So you want to kind of keep them grouped together and, and separated. Traditionally use divs, uh, DIVs to make those boxes to keep those groups together and then apply a header to it depending on what the um, type of group it is, or sorry, uh, apply a, a, an ID to it, depending on the type of group it is. So in this case, it's header. Uh, there with uh, HTML5, like the latest version of HTML, there's other options. Like instead of div, you could say main for your main container. There's a header HTML element. There's a footer HTML element. So you could use those, um, but traditionally and historically, it's divs are pretty popular and then applying an ID to that div. So, so yeah, this is what kind of grouping looks like with divs. And obviously it's gonna be uh, grouped together when it's loaded in the browser and kind of be in its own box for that specific content. So you can kind of group text together, inline, inline elements together as well uh, by using this um, span. So if you wanted to, apply like a new style to Tate Modern, make it bold or a different color, then actually yeah, a different color or a different typeface or something like that. Then you could use the span grouping element or in, inline elements and then give it a class and then apply a style to that class. So span is, is similar to div. Div is meant for block elements and span is meant for inline elements for, for grouping purposes. So then this is what it looks like in the browser. So um, we're applying a, a style to it that's this bolder, or that's uh, all, all caps, but staying in line with the rest of the text. So that's divs and spans and, and grouping different elements, block and inline elements. So next, uh, iframes. Um, so iframes are, are pretty straightforward. It's basically a box they can load on your website so that loads in another website into that box. So that's uh, used for like Google Maps. If you want to have a Google Map on your own website, or if you want to have a YouTube video, you use iframes. Um, or if you want to load like another website on your website, then you could do that too. So it's again just a box that has a width and a height. And then inside that box, you're going to load a source value, which is going to be. A, a URL for another website. In this case, we're using Google Maps. You can set frame border to be zero, or you can have a, a, a border around it. And then you can have scrolling or no scrolling. So if you want someone to be able to scroll in the box, then you can say yes. If you don't want them to scroll in the box, then just say no. So this is what that would look like. The last thing, I believe, or almost last thing, uh, are escape characters. Um, so if there's any characters that you want to use in HTML that are special characters, specialty characters, then you have to use some HTML code usually for them to load properly, especially uh, elements that uh, are used in HTML, like the carrots. 
because those are used to represent different tags in HTML, we have to use uh, these characters, these this bit of HTML code, escape characters to uh, make sure that it knows that these should be loaded as text, not as HTML characters. So for copyright, um, this is a copyright code. For the characters, uh, for carrots, left and right car carrots, then that's the code for that. And this is what it looks like when you load it in the browser. So because we use these for our HTML tags, it's going to get confused if we use them in the text as well. Last thing. In the head, uh, again, this, this is the area where we put content that we don't uh, want it to load in the browser window itself. So this is going to be where title goes, for example. Um, you can add more information about the web page itself uh, called metadata in the head. And this is mainly used for like Google search engine, Yahoo search engine to scrape through the web and find uh, descriptions and titles of your web page itself to basically add to their, their database and, and search engine. So metadata can be like description or a title of your website. And then you add the content. So what the browser is going to see, essentially. So content is going to be what the um, search engine sees. There's other meta tags like robots, if you want uh, like uh, Google robots to, to follow you um, and update their search engine based off of any updates you do to your website. Can add author author information uh, and all sorts of other information to, to uh, for searchability purposes. So yeah, metadata is important when it comes to Google and Yahoo and all these search engines being uh, finding you and your website on online through their searching platforms. Don't feel like you need to remember everything. Uh, you can refer back to the slides to, uh, for the tags that we talked about refer back to the video um, that I will post. Um, you can Google and find um, like references, like W3 uh, School is a great one for just like um, a dictionary of HTML tags. But yeah, the more you use it, the more comfortable you get, the more you'll remember these different tags. But it's all about just remembering what the tags are and what they do. But Again, you have the internet at your fingertips, so you can Google things and figure it out um, that way too. So for our homework, um, I want you to create one HTML page for all your unique pages on your website. Uh, so, I mean, if you're doing a very large site, then let's just do like the home page uh, and maybe like two, two secondary pages. So a total of three, and then have a navigation connected to all your pages so they're all linked to each other. So for like a portfolio site, let's do the home page, let's do um, the main portfolio page, let's do uh, maybe a a detail page for the portfolio, and then like the contact and about about pages, and then have them all linked to each other appropriately. So don't worry about how it looks. Just worry about uh, the content and linking all the pages together. So, so in Glitch, so I would do like, let's create a new file. Let's call it like contact.html. Let's do another one. Let's call it about.html. And then I'm going to do another one called portfolio.html. And then let's see another one. It's called um, uh, projects folder, and then projects one.html. So this is for a portfolio site anyway. This is kind of how we should sort of be structured, something like that. And then um, I would work on just the home page, the index.html first, and get the navigation working there. You can refer back to last week's example too. Uh, we kind of had a couple of pages linked in there. I think two pages linked back and forth in there. So I would refer back to that um, 
example and basically just add more links to it uh, to link to about, to link to contacts, um, link to portfolio. Um, but, but yeah, so I guess we can do at least one here. So I'm going to make this a div. Let's call it header. Give it an ID header. Oops. So we're going to just group the navigation. Let's make this as an unordered list. So this would be like home. Actually, let's do that. Home. And that would be source equals. Oops. Equals index HTML. And then the next one would be contact at HTML, or actually let's do about that HTML and about us or about me or just about is fine. And copy that to portfolio dot HTML. Portfolio, oops. Portfolio. Do that. This would be contact at HTML. Contact. Oh, sorry, it's not source. It's href. My bad. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So now I don't know if it works in here. Yeah, it doesn't work in here. So if we go to view on a new window, then when we click on any one of these, it'll take us to portfolio.html and about.html and contact.html. So that's our kind of navigation. And now that I have it working in one, then I'm just gonna copy this. Really, let me move this up. Say, okay, navigation. Header and navigation. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that and HTML and title um, and then body. Okay, and then paste it in the body. And then I could copy all of this, paste it in contacts, paste it in about. Um, and then I could paste in projects, but because this is in a folder, we're going to have to do dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash. So it has to go outside of that folder to go back to these files. Okay, so now let's just view this. So now when I go to about, it goes to the about page, but we have the navigation there. So I can go back to home, portfolio, contact. So we have our navigation. So I, the, the second part of this uh, assignment, I just kind of did with you. So you can take that and use it for your sites. Um, and then just change like the different links in here to you know work for your design and site map.